seniors. And so it's um, really neat to see them grow over those four years. So I'm really excited to be able to present them to you today. Um, we also have a BRBGF graduate with us today, Rusty Pippen. And thanks to everybody who's come uh, and supported them all this time. Uh, we're going to start off, um, the presentations will be about eight to ten minutes each, and then we'll have questions. Um, they will be recorded, so if you can uh, make sure that all your cell phones, uh, the ringers are off or they're turned off. Um, and if you want to take pictures, please not flash photography. Um, thank you, Susan. We're going to start off with Abigail Leveron. And Good morning, I'm Abby Leverone, and today I'll be presenting on my topic, which is addressing the spread of misinformation through the media. My quote for this project was, the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and make, to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. And that's from Malcolm X. My, qu my question or my topic for this project was, how do we empower citizens to identify misinformation and find reliable sources instead? So obviously, this is a huge issue in our society today, as we're constantly being exposed to misinformation on a daily basis through our family, our friends, and social media. For instance, 126 million Americans were exposed to Russian-backed content leading up to the 2016 election. That's about one-third of the U.S. population whose ideas and opinions were being influenced in some form or way. So obviously this has huge effects on us and throughout my research I found that the three main ways in which it affects us is scientifically, politically, and socially. Scientifically the huge issue is that millions of Americans will form their ideas and opinions on controversial scientific topics from social media. The problem with this is that they'll be exposed to something called science exploitation, which is basically where a website or a source will take a complicated scientific topic and condense it down so that it's easier for us to understand. The issue with this is that sometimes they'll do it incorrectly and then we'll base our opinions off of uh, untrue information. A real world example of this would be in 2014 and 2015 when Western country civilians stopped getting the vaccines they needed because they felt it caused adverse effects on their health. This led to a measles outbreak, and had they been more informed, this would never have happened. Uh, politically, this has been a main issue recently, and the issue with this is that we're all subjected to something called confirmation bias. That's basically where we'll intentionally seek out sources that we know um, support what we already believe, and this just reinforces in our minds that we're correct even when we're not necessarily right. Another major effect is the worldview backfire effect, which is kind of ironic because when we're presented uh, information or factual information that contradicts what we believe, it actually strengthens our previous beliefs and opinions. So these two things hurt democracy as a whole because we're based on this foundation of communication and open-mindedness where we can discuss our ideas with one another and understand other people's perceptions and opinions. So when we can't uh, talk to one another and have open debate, it hurts our principles as a democracy. Socially, it can affect our well-being and our overall health as a society. For instance, in 2000 through 2005 in South Africa, 330,000 excess people died because they did not understand the scientific consensus that HIV caused AIDS. Had they understand this and not had these misconceptions, they would still be here today. So how do we solve this? We've had um, efforts before to try to solve this problem. For instance, things like factcheck.org and snopes.com have made efforts to combat this issue and there's volunteer networks put in place. However, I feel that the best way to combat this is to start with the education of our youth. If we can begin in, or implement courses throughout elementary school that builds throughout middle school and high school to create a foundation for critical thinking and media literacy in our children and our students, then we can help build a better generation for analyzing sources and understanding where our information is coming from. In this way, we can base our opinions off of factual evidence and be able to become a smarter and better society overall. Children also have a huge influence on their peers and their parents, so I feel like this is the best way to begin to combat the issue. So how did I come around to this topic? Originally, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I kind of decided on the broad topic of journalism, and I didn't really know how I wanted to take it. I threw a few ideas around, and I actually settled in this idea when I conducted an interview with my mentor, Emily Brown, here. 
And we had about an hour long conversation about journalism and how uh, the media spreads. And I asked her a few questions about the public distrust of national news. And we discussed this and she talked about how uh, it's hard for the public to trust news anymore because there's so much misinformation circulating. And I decided that I wanted to take on this issue and see if there was any way that we could tackle it. Uh, throughout my internship, I worked at the Nelson County Times at the News in Advance in Lynchburg, Virginia, here in this office. And I saw the editing processes of many articles, uh, how journalists write articles, and I shadowed Emily on many interviews as well. I even wrote one of my own articles on the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, which was a challenge for me because I'm passionate about the topic and I have uh, strong views on it. So I had to take the issue and write on, on it unbiasedly. And I conducted two interviews, one with a public relations per public relations person from Dominion, Aaron Ruby, and an attorney from Southern Environmental Law, Greg Bubber. You can find this article on my website. For my community service, I worked here at the Nelson County High with Jennifer Campbell and Lindsay Hill as the main editor for the Nelson County High newspaper. The newspaper started last year, and so I felt that we needed to give more ownership and responsibility to the students. So I tried to uh, make it a platform in which they could express their voice within the school. And I'd say it was pretty successful, although there's still room to improve, which I hope will be built on in the future years. In continuation of my community service, I went into four classes, two government classes, a history class, and an English class. And I gave the students a pre-assessment to test their knowledge on media literacy and misinformation. And then afterwards, I gave them a presentation that explained misinformation and its effects and how they can identify and avoid it. Then finally, I gave them a couple of articles, a few that were fake and a few that were real, and asked them to try to decide which ones were real and which ones weren't. I found that it was about a 50-50 shot for them to actually get it right without researching the uh, article further, which is pretty a, a pretty accurate representation of our society as no one really looks up sources uh, more than they have to. They just kind of glance at it quickly. And so I think it's important to understand that it's really, oops, it's really hard to tell the difference when just given the article. I also found from my pre-assessment that 17% of the students got their main news from social media, which is a huge issue because that's the breeding ground in which misinformation is spread. Anything can go viral within seconds or minutes and millions of people can see it in a very short amount of time. So it's important to understand that though social media is a great place to share about yourself and keep up with friends, it's not a good place to get your news. So throughout this process, I learned that uh, I am not very good at taking on leadership positions and organizing large groups of people. I am proud that I stepped up to the challenge and tried to take on a leadership position. And I say that I was pretty successful, but I don't enjoy doing it. And I probably uh, will not do so in the future, but I am proud that I did. And I've also learned that approaching strangers and conversing with them is not as intimidating as it may at first seem. For upcoming seniors, make sure to pick something that you enjoy and that you love. Otherwise, this project can be kind of a hassle. So to make it more enjoyable for yourself, try to find something that you like doing. Um, another word of advice for you is to manage your time. Make sure to try to get your internship done over the summer so that you have a lot of time to do your college applications, to work on your research paper, your website. There's a lot to get done your senior year. So keep that in mind as you take on this project. For the next four years, I will be attending Virginia Tech to study interior design and the architecture and urban studies college. I am extremely excited to be a Hokie for the next four years. Does anyone have any questions for me? Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Uh, I'm hoping that the students will take up on the responsibility and continue the uh, newspaper, although I'd say that the participation has not been what I expected it to be. Um, Although there are some students who are really dedicated to the program, so I'm hoping that 
um, some of the juniors and seniors next year will t step up to the challenge and continue it on. I think there's a lot more student ownership at the moment than there was last year. So I think it's building and it's becoming a stronger foundation. So Oops. any more questions for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I kind of wrote a step-by-step -step process in my paper on this, but I think the best way to do this is to kind of start slowly in elementary school, just begin with small courses, introduce them to the idea of analyzing your sources and understanding that information, and then through middle school, build on that in high school as well. And I think that they should work a lot on project-based um, kind of activities so that they're being exposed to misinformation and they're themselves physically um, determining the difference and that kind of thing. So I think they just need to be exposed to um, misinformation and understand how to analyze that information. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. uh, interior design. So. It's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted to major in journalism at, in my junior year, and um, though I really enjoy this project, I found that I'm kind of wanting to try something different, and I've always been into art, so I decided that this might be the way to go. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay.